you are ready to perform the analysis and design on your model, you will go up to the menu bar and select Analyze, followed by Run Analysis. Now to review all of your design results, we have two major areas you can go to. You can view some results in your output file or go to your post-processing mode. And we'll show you both options and the results that are going to be available in each. We're first going to start with our output file. So in your Stat Analysis and Design dialog, we'll now select View Output File and then click on the Done button. Now within the output file, you should receive any notes, errors, or warnings that were prevalent in your model. And those would also be reported in your stat analysis and design dialog. For this particular model, we do have a few notes that we can go ahead and review. And what you're going to notice is these are quick little links to those particular areas in the output report. If you reviewed your notes and realize that everything is acceptable, you're ready to proceed to review your results. Over at the left hand side of the screen, I'm now going to click on my results bar and I'm going to see one option here. This is the results of the steel design code checking command that I invoked in the modeling mode. I can click on this area and then I can receive the results for each particular member in the model, starting with member one. I can see the section size that was assigned to it. I can see whether it was passing or failing and also the interaction ratio. Here I can see that a member did fail. Now since we did utilize the code checking command workflow, basically STAD Pro will indicate pass or fail, and then it would be up to you as the engineer to go back and replace that section with a more satisfactory section, rerun the design, and see if you've achieved your passing design that you're looking for. So here I can scroll through each particular member and see failing or I also have some passing members here. Now, if you'd like a little assistance to look through your output file, we do have a find or search capabilities. If I go up into my toolbar, I can find a find icon, which looks like a set of binoculars. Here, I'm going to type in the word fail, and I'm going to tell the program to find next. And this might be an easy way to kind of scroll through and quickly see if you have any failing members or roughly how many you might have. Now once you're done reviewing your output file, we can just go ahead and close the search dialog and we can close this output file just by clicking File Exit. If you ever want to return to your output file, we do have a command up here to view your stat output and this icon will only be available if a valid analysis is ready. Now at this point, we're going to review the rest of our results in our post processor. So in my tabs over at the top of my screen, I'm going to now select post processing. Now the post processor again will only be available if a valid analysis exists and you'd be able to very quickly see if your post processor is available because any of these modes where the font is indicated in black writing means that that mode is currently available. If the font was in white, it would mean that that mode is not available. Now in the results setup dialog, we can review results for any individual load case or all of the load cases and combinations at the same time. To ensure that all of my results are available and able to be viewed on screen, I'm just going to keep all of them over in this selected window. The other option I'm going to do is I'm going to select this results view options tab and I'm going to select a checkbox here to enable automatic scaling. And I'm going to select all of these options down here. This will mean that as I review different pieces of results, Stat Pro will automatically exaggerate the diagrams or say the deflection of the model in order for me to be able to see that a little bit more clearly. Once you enter all of your options in the results setup, we can go ahead and click the OK button. We do have a variety of results available in the post processor. 
If you noticed in the beginning, if I look over at my page control area, and this is the page control that is specific for the post processor, I would start in the node tab and then I can review my displacements or my nodal reactions. All of the results that I see on screen are according to the currently selected load case. And if I select a different load case, say instead of a lateral load such as seismic, I can select dead load, and you're going to see that my deflection diagram is going to change. And of course, all your tables over at the right hand side of the screen will give you some relevant information. And here I can see I have nodal displacements and also beam relative displacements. If I select the next item in the page control area, I can see that for my beam members, I can see a variety of forces or stress output. Again, a lot of this information on your screen would be according to the currently selected load case. For this particular course, we are focusing on beam design. So let me proceed to my Unity Check tab over in the page control area. I'm going to go ahead and make this a little bit bigger. Let's focus on this diagram first of all. Here I'm going to see that the diagram has been color coded either green, blue, or red. Let's take a further look at what these colors mean. If I go up to my menu bar, I'm now going to select View followed by Structure Diagrams. And in this Diagrams dialog, I'm going to select the Design Results tab. Here I'm going to see my color coding options for the actual ratio. And these can be color coded to your liking. I'm going to see three major categories for members that were performed a beam design. I have my green category and the default for that is from an interaction ratio of 0 to 1.0. Now for STAD Pro in the post processor, this basically means that this is a passing member. So any member in green is passing. Any member in blue, it would be calling a failing category. And that's for basically an interaction ratio of 1 to 1.5. Anything that's in red means it has an interaction ratio greater than 1.5. And it's kind of flagged this as an extreme failure situation. Typically, I don't customize these ranges. I like to review them according to the defaults. After I've reviewed this information, let's go ahead and click Cancel and take a look at this diagram again. Now from here, I can see that I have several uh, blue members and red members. These are members that I'd want to address in a secondary run. Now in STAT Pro, it is important to understand the pass-fail categories and how to identify failing members in STAD Pro post-processor. So if I go up to my Select menu, I'm going to say Select. I'm going to say By Specification. And then I'm going to say All Failed Beams. This is another quick way to determine where you have failing members. But let's make sure we understand what it's showing us. In the calculation engine, that's when the calculation is performed, a fail status will report, be reported on any member whose unity check value exceeds the maximum allowable interaction ratio. And the default is typically set at 1.0. Now in the GUI within the post processor, the failed members tab and the failed member selection command, what we just used to select these members, is based on the fail range, either blue or red members defined in the basic diagram section of the design results tab of the diagrams. This means that had I customized those failing ranges in that diagrams dialog, say to um, indicate only red members to be an interaction ratio greater than 1.0, I might be accidentally selecting different members that I didn't intend to. For this particular model, I can see that several girders, columns, and braces are currently failing. We will now return to the modeling mode and assign new sizes to those failing members. After any size is changed, the model must be reanalyzed to verify that it, if the new sizes pass the code check. Now before we leave the post processor, let's also just very quickly take a look at the design results table. Again, I have each member indicated here. I have their interaction ratio, and then I can see the area which caused the controlling information or the controlling results for this particular member. 
Again, I can select my failed members tab, and this is going to identify any member that according to that structures diagrams is failing. So any blue or red members gets flagged here. I'm now going to return to the modeling mode and address my failing members. Once back in the modeling mode, I'm going to go to my general tab, followed by my property sub tab. And I can see here that a couple of columns and a couple of girders and some braces would need to be replaced with larger sections. Over here I can see that my columns are currently set as a W12 by 30. Now I only had a few columns that were failing, but for convenience for this particular model, I'm going to change all their sizes from a W12 by 30 to a W12 by 50. And this can be done very quickly by highlighting the section in the properties table and then clicking on my edit button. Here this will allow me, since I had already invoked the American Steel table sections, it will allow me to select anything else from this particular database. Instead of a 12 by 30, I'm going to select a W12 by 50, and then I'm going to click on the Change button. I'm also going to change the size of my girders. They were a W12 by 19, and now I'm going to change it to a W14 by 34. And lastly, I have my braces. I'm going to select an HSS. 4x4, four four, and I'm going to select it a different 4x4 four four, but with a thicker, thicker wall. So here I'm going to select a 3 8 inch wall thickness and click the change button. Now it is important to note that I did stick with the same type of section or the same type of profile when replacing my sections. If, however, through this trial and error process, say you went from a wide flange section to an HSS tube section, you would need to go back and review the yield strengths you have assigned to each of those members to make sure they're still appropriate. At this point, I'm going to go ahead and re-perform my design by clicking Analyze, followed by Run Analysis. After the design is completed, we could return back to the output file or review our results in the post processor. For this particular workflow, I'm going to go right to the post processor to see if I've achieved a failing design. Of course, if any members are still failing, then what I'd want to do is I'd want to go back and just keep changing my member sizes until I achieve all of my passing members. Over in the page control area, I'm now going to select the beam tab followed by the Unity Check sub-tab. I'm going to make this diagram a little bit larger. And here I can see that every single member is in green. I don't have any blue or red members, which indicate I have no failing or extremely failing members in my model at this point. So I would say that I have achieved a passing design. To re-verify that, I can select the Failed Members tab, and we can see that this table is currently empty. And again here, I can see all of the information for every single member. I can see what size was assigned to the member and what their interaction ratio was. And all of the interaction ratios are less than 1.0. At this point, we have completed our process for designing a steel structure in STAD Pro.